Are you tired of property taxes? We all are basically. Here's the thing in California, Proposition 13 is saving us a lot of money. Oh, let me explain it to you. I'm going to break it down. And I'm going to help you understand when I say you need to pay attention to what you're voting on locally. It's going to make a huge difference when I show you how it all breaks down in the numbers. Let's talk Prop 13 and property taxes. Super sexy coming in hot. So you know I am Angel, your local Bakersfield realtor here in Bakersfield. This is the Living in Bakersfield channel where, where we talk about everything about living in Bakersfield, moving here, calling this place home. I would love to welcome you into this community. A call, a text, an email, all work on getting hold of me or my team, and we can get you started on that process. I look forward to hearing from you. Let's talk about Proposition 13. So Prop 13 is very specific to the state of California. In other states, they manage their property taxes in very different ways. California being a super highly desired place to move to in and around, especially the 70s and 80s, people were getting priced out of their homes with the property taxes. They were like, good Lord, we're not going to be able to afford it, not just because of our house payment, but because of the taxes that we have to pay on this house. Enter Prop 13. In 1978, they voted, they being the state of California voted on Prop 13. So in 1978, they said, okay, we're gonna roll back all of the costs of all of these properties. And we're gonna put like a benchmark that says, you cannot raise our property taxes higher than 2% a year starting in 1975. And then from 1975 forward to today, 2023, our property taxes cannot be raised more than 2% a year annually. And I'm going to say cannot be raised because I'm going to break that down in just a minute because it's kind of like, mm, okay, state of California, you're going to get your money somehow. That's right. So those people that bought those beautiful houses down in Huntington Beach or up in San Francisco, they now have this incredibly low property tax bill because from 1975, it's only gone up a max of 2% a year. So, you know, you could be looking at some house down in Huntington Beach and they could only be paying like $800 a year in property taxes because of Proposition 13. So don't misunderstand me. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just trying to make sure that everybody understands what the plan is here. PITI is something that we in the real estate industry talk about a lot. So that means principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. So principal, I'm borrowing $430,000. Interest, my interest rate is 5.8, okay? Principal and interest. Taxes, that's what we're talking about. Taxes change based on Kern County, LA County, San Mateo County, Orange County, San Diego County, you know, Inyo Riverside, all of those. Every county has a different tax and then insurance. That's your homeowner's insurance. That P-I-T-I -I is called an impound account. That is what you pay every month in your mortgage payment. So when you pay off your house, you no longer have the principal and interest. You just have the taxes and the insurance. You're going to pay off your house. I promise. So let's focus in on that taxes bit. So even if you have an impound account, it's being paid monthly. They are like the first half of the year and the second half of the year. So, you know, you're paying for them all year long in your monthly payment. But when you pay off your house, you have two installments. You can make one big payment or you can make it in, you know, twice the year. It's due December 10th and it's due April 10th. So let's focus on this taxes bit while we are kind of talking about this impound account thing. You pay your property taxes in that impound account. Back in the 70s, they were like, good Lord, we're going to be paying more in these property taxes than we are in the mortgage and the interest on our mortgage. And back in the 70s and 80s, they were like way high. They were like 12, 13, 17. You've heard the stories. I've heard the stories. Like, you know, that's a lot of interest to be paying on top of your loan. Then on add in your California property taxes. <laughs> so the state of California said, mayday, Uncle Sam, get back. So they rolled it out as a proposition to the entire state and people went heck to the yeah and they voted to install Proposition 13. So the state got a little, you know, hmm. 
And they were like, well, you know, that's that's 53 percent of our income that goes toward all the things that we need to do for your schools. State's always going to find a way to make it sound like we don't have enough money. They did have enough money in 1975. As a matter of fact, they were in a surplus. They were way in the black. And <laughs> the people in California were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What they started to do was find a way to get back into your property taxes so that when I say they don't go up more than 2% by Prop 13 standards, they don't. Here's what they do. They introduce bond measures and other propositions that just go into your property taxes. So those payments are due twice a year. If it's in your impound account, obviously you're paying it divided by 12. You're paying a little bit all year round. But the thing to keep in mind is when you are voting on bond measure C or Prop 73, I don't even know if these are real ones, but if you're voting on them and they go, oh, it'll just go into your property taxes. So that bond measure for your district increases your local property taxes. See how they get their money? Creative, but yet kind of not. <laughs> but here's my advice for you. So when you are looking to buy and or you already live here, you absolutely need to pay attention to all of those bond measures that come down the pike for us voters, whether it's a proposition, whether it's a bond for your school districts, whatever it looks like. Oh, it's for the dispensaries that are going to be in and around town. We need to make sure the taxes are, you know, paid for. They always tend to make sure that it's like Oh, it'll just go in your property taxes. I know we all get in a dither about who's in the White House and who's in the Capitol buildings of our state, but these bond measures and these propositions that are put before us as voters make a huge difference locally. Politics is always local anyway. That's when it really impacts you. Your state taxes, your property taxes, and your local and county taxes, those are the ones that hit you the hardest because those are the ones that you're paying for directly based on where you live. In addition to those bond measure C and prop, you know, 71 or whatever, they will get their property tax money if they are reassessing the value in the neighborhood. So somebody moves in that property changes owners, or you do some modifications to the property. You add on a second story, you add on a mother-in-law suite or a casita in the back, whatever your property can allow, that then changes what you're paying in property taxes because that's more square footage, taller, wider, longer, an additional roof. The city and the state are going to get more property taxes off of your property because of that. And then the new owner takes ownership of that property. The property taxes that that person was paying to what the new person is going to be paying is called a supplemental. They're going to get the difference on the new owner. The new owner will pay a one-time supplemental. It's almost like a catch up, like you've got to pay the difference between what it was valued at and what it's sold for. Sometimes that's a healthy chunk. Think about some of the counties down in LA County, some of those houses in Malibu, some of the ones up in the up in the Bay Area that are coastal and beautiful, you know, Upper and Carmel and Lake Tahoe. That can be a significant millions of dollars of a one-time fee. So you have to be very careful when you're setting up title in your home. Always want to check with an advisor to make sure you have title held appropriately so that if you're not selling it and you're handing it down to an heir or a child or a grandchild or somebody with special needs, that they're not hit with those very, very high property taxes on a change of ownership. So change of ownership is going to be very, very big. So as states do, they find ways to get more tax dollars out of their people in their state. That's just the nature of the beast. Nothing we can do about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and as much as the state would love to have Proposition 13 zing go away, that would basically sink all of us homeowners in the state of California because property taxes wouldn't be based on that, you know, benchmark of 2%. It would be based on like, you know, imagine in 2020 to 2022, when we were getting 16 and 17% increases in property value. Imagine your property taxes increasing year over year at that rate, we'd be sunk. Everybody would be sunk. That's why the 2% is still highly favored. As a matter of fact, a Cato Institute 
survey from 2021, I believe, stated that over half of the state is still a very big fan of Proposition 13 staying in place. Now, the powers that be are going to do as much as they possibly can to get rid of Prop 13. People are still moving here, praise the Lord. They're moving in my community, praise the Lord. But we are still a very expensive state. So all of these things make a difference, you know, death by a thousand cuts. Like I don't want anybody to sink themselves by voting yes on all kinds of measures that could potentially really impact not only you, but your kids' kids, if they're going to inherit your land, your farm, your house, your beachfront property, whatever, you have to be very, very careful that you are not just green lighting everything to go into the property taxes, then you're sinking them and they can't take over the ownership of the property, which is what homeownership is really about. It's saying back in the day, they were like, we're going to own our own land and we're going to have our own space and we'll pay you taxes for a certain amount of it. But after that, peace out. It's ours. You set up the title very, very carefully with your advisors, your financial advisor, with your tax advisor, anybody that you can make sure is got your best interest at heart, because honestly, the state does not have our best interest at heart. The state is taking care of the state and that's fine. There are taxes that are absolutely, we have to pay. Duh. You got it, dude. <laughs> but I'm a big advocate for you to be mindful of your own situation in the best possible way for you to be a good steward of what you have, what you've worked hard for, what you want to hand down to your children and their children's children. I know this wasn't sexy and I know it's not a fun thing to do around Bakersfield video, but it's very, very important when it comes to owning a home that you know some of this back end information. I look forward to hearing from you. I will see you around town.